It's evil. It's evil. It's all evil, man. I'm go I'm going on hunger strike until Mr. Beast stops what he's doing. And they are they're fully naked. Full blown genius. 4K HD. This is absolutely insane. And you know what? I like it. I like it. I don't think the American people should stand for this. Hmm. I mean, Netflix. I think it's over. I don't. I don't know how they're going to recover from this. The Stranger Things kids are dead. They died. What? What? I feel like everything's just happening so fast. Like what? I don't know, like the WGA strike is over, right? So now Netflix and all the streamers are going to be changing, and 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 then you got uh, that's fine. Airlines want people to start taking Ozempic so that they can save money on fuel. What? Yeah, and Mark Zuckerberg did a cool thing. So now I got to think Mark Zuckerberg's cool. You don't have to think Mark Zuckerberg is cool. <laughs> Mr. Beast. Lock the guy in a grocery store, and then and then you got you got naked people dating on TV. <laughs> RFK Jr. did another backflip. Diane Feinstein. Okay, those are kind of nuts. Yeah, I think I know something that's gonna make you feel better. <sighs> yeah, me too. Uh, no, not that. Look, why don't we go inside? We'll get you a diet coke, and we'll talk about it. Yeah. 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 Diet coke sounds good. Yeah. That coke sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. What All do right. you say? Let's go. Let's do it. All right. Hey, everybody. So, a couple reminders up top. Be sure to subscribe. Follow us on social media if you haven't already. Stay tuned for a little mini series we're going to be uh, debuting in the next week or two. Also, Emil here has a show at the Lyric Hyperion here in Los Angeles on October 12th at 9.30. There's going to be a ticket link in the description. It's, it's sold out. It's sold out. So, <laughs> so thank you to everyone. If you didn't get it, you got to, you, you screwed up and you got to get it There'll be another one time. at some point. Thanks for everyone who bought a ticket. So big news, buddy. <laughs> She's dead. Who's dead, Ben? She's dead. Who's dead, Ben? <laughs> Diane Feinstein. Feinstein. And a lot of people are wondering... Did I have anything to do with it? Yeah. No. No, I didn't have anything to do with it. Where were you? Where was I? Uh, let's see. What day did she die? What day did she die? Just sounds a few like, days ago? Sounds like someone who was... I don't think I was... I wasn't like mopping... She didn't fall from stairs, did she? I don't know. From the top of a, a flight of marble steps that had just been recently mopped? I think she. they're saying she died of... Heart failure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like a 90-year-old. Yeah. You know, I, I don't have any jokes to make. Um, Cause of death? Well, Old as shit. Look, she was controversial toward the end of her career, right? But I think there's one thing we can all agree on, which was uh, she was sexy as hell. She was fucking, she was hot. Even to the end? She was, she was the hottest, she was the hottest uh, person in all of the Senate. She was a hot piece of ass. Yeah. Yeah. So she was um she was the former mayor of San Francisco. That's right. She also served as a California senator since 1992. Yeah, I'm looking right here according to uh reports she did die of heart failure failure, but she was apparently heard trying to make a deal with death. She was offering to trade all of her living healthy grandchildren to take her place. Interesting. Yeah. And also, uh, despite her death, she is expected to finish out the rest of her term at the end of 2024. So her, st her staffers apparently tried to, um, do some kind of summoning and reanimate her body so they could continue. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Going to dinner with lobbyists and that kind of thing. Right. I mean, like I said, it, it doesn't really matter because she is going to still finish out her term uh, until 2024. As she should. As she should. You wouldn't ask a man to step down. No. Never. <laughs> Why would you do so? Are you looking at a picture of her? Uh, no, I'm looking. At, so was, that's the thing. When the, when these happen, there's always the, you know, kind of... Uh, People tarnishing their legacy? No, there's always libs going like we need to be respectful. We need to make sure we're yes. uh, we're honoring our queen. But this woman Esha K on Twitter, Esha Legal, compiled a bunch of. She was basically like, I don't want people whitewashing her legacy. Like, here's what she was actually doing. And so, you know, as mayor prosecuting black activists while she was trying to 
keep flying the Confederate flag in San Francisco. Okay, wow, yeah, Vetoing we got rent control provisions, uh, you know, anti-gay stuff where she's um, vetoing uh, proposals that would give homosexuals the same benefits. Uh, so she was American. vetoing that kind of stuff. Yeah. She famously also yelled at those children or not yelled at them, but yeah. scolded them. But this has been her entire career is her point. Right. And, you know, uh, in the early nineties, fear mongering about immigration. Uh, she's just all over the place. Well, you can't take away the fact that she was sexy. Like I said, voting, in nobody can take sanctions. that away. From her. That's your big takeaway. You can't whitewash that. What sexiness. Yeah. Her sexiness. But, uh, Enough about that. My mom gave me enough um, guff already. She said, can you stop tweeting jokes? Well, because... Fam- does she follow you on Twitter? Of course she does. Oh, interesting. Famously, I, I've joked about Diane Feinstein's imminent demise here on the show. And so and naturally... Like, dem eyes are beautiful. Dem eyes are so beautiful. The only imminent <laughs> dem eyes I'm seeing is them sweet my, eyes on... I was going to say my <laughs> pants around my ankles. Crank, crank out... No, don't do it. Drink my hog. No. But when she passed, my mentions were a mess. People tagging me on Twitter, people accusing me of having something to do with her death. And my mom, I retweeted one or two, and my mom just said, tweet, or texted me and asked me to, can you just stop? I don't know if she's a fine head or something. Your mom, your mom might be. I a, have no idea. She did Is not. that what they call themselves? Fine heads? Yeah, fine heads. Fine heads unite. Fine heads. Um, all right, enough of that. Anyway, the the other big news that happened was, of course, the WGA reached a historic landmark um, deal with with all of the major studios. Um, and just so before we get into that, it we got to emphasize the fact that Netflix really <laughs> Netflix how much sucks. they changed the industry. They they Netflix really sucks. They started making their own content in 2013. I believe they st- I believe the company started years before that, but prior to making their own shows and movies, they were strictly just like a blockbuster where you could rent DVDs and then they, they would introduced, ship them to your house. They would ship them to your house and then you could And then they introduced streaming. Streaming, right? So, so there's a lot of licensed content, right? not original content. But once they started making their own shows and movies, they made every other, and, and their subscriber base was ratcheting up. Every movie studio and television studio started to panic, and they thought, okay, we got to follow suit. Well, because they struck out pretty big. Yes. Orange is the New Black. Yes. House of Cards. Yes. Stranger Things, a later... A later hit, but sure. a hit nonetheless. Bird Box, which was, I mean, that's debatable Bird because Box, that's pretty late. And that's yeah, and also that was vehicle. kind of a manufactured craze hysteria. But so all of these other studios were chasing a business model that was doomed to fail, and it it kind of was crazy making from the outside looking in, seeing these inflated budgets, seeing them consistently quarter after quarter losing money. Netflix, I mean. Uh, it just you can't charge a flat rate for things like this. You can't just like why um what was it movie pass? That's why movie pass failed. You movie can't movie pass is back. Is it? Yeah, they I resurrected if, it. It's a different thing, but it's Oh yeah, they got like AMC plus, but you can only see three movies. Yeah, but movie pass itself is back. Awesome. <laughs> Nonetheless, all of these uh all of these studios have now they're reaping what they've sown, they're spending too much, and there aren't enough customers to go around to offset those high costs. Netflix, in fact, is the only company to have turned a profit on this model. They eventually did come around to being cash flow positive. So let's talk about the deal. What's the deal? Well, it's overall worth $233 million a year, right? Well, before, but I also want to talk about the like how crazy they got with, because the story we're going to talk about where they're like framing what the deal means for these companies and how they have to change. I think it's not, I think the bigger story is that how, how poorly they ran these companies rather than this deal with, um, the writers, Mm. like the, you know, uh, (laughs) the stuff they're doing, everyone knows about the Amazon Lord of the Rings series. They spent 
So this is the most expensive streaming show ever, $465 million on the first season, and it, it, it achieved just a 37% completion rate among viewers. Do you know anyone who's watched this fucking show? I know this zero This was supposed people. to be like a big tentpole yeah. vehicle for them. They, they, I know one person who watched it, and I said, you watched that show? And they said, I was going through a breakup. <laughs> That's the thing with these with these shows also is it seems like they they manufactured the hysteria amongst themselves that oh well we spent even more money and it was like they thought that the more you spent the more popular the show would be. Right. Disney Plus recently shelled out 212 million dollars for the Secret, Secret invasion. invasion. I don't even know what that is. Oh, and I the- watched it when I was going through a breakup. It was great, man. It really <laughs> helped me out. But and so that's the thing for every one of these like Stranger Things or uh, which also costs like thirty million dollars per episode. But there's a payoff there. There's there's probably people being like, "Damn, this is a show everyone's talking about. Everyone says it kicks ass. I need to sign up for Stranger Things, and I need to get Stranger Things socks, and I need to get Stranger (laughs) Things socks." I mean, yes. Well, by the way, Netflix is now getting into the merch game like Disney, big time. um, But then. You have shows like Real Rob, the uh, the Rob Schneider Oh, man, dude, I love Real that, Rob. <laughs> that everyone everyone was asking for. We yeah. need more Rob Schneider. Wait, what about Prank Encounters, starring the kid from Stranger Things? Is that a real thing? Yeah, Prank Encounters, man. <laughs> I guess the, the, the gist of the show is they, it's, it's, it's insanely cruel. They offer people jobs, like dream jobs, and then say, just kidding, it's a prank. <laughs> so these people are what? are left going like, oh, so I didn't get this awesome job? And it's like, no. And it's that kid with like his teeth missing going, like, just kidding. <laughs> That's know? awful. That's the worst kind of prank. prank. Yeah. And then there's that fucking, is it a cake show? With Mikey Day from SNL. But then they went big. Remember Marco Polo? They were like, we Yeah, need- the pool game? Everyone wants to watch a show about the namesake of your least favorite pool game. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. <laughs> the Italian Merchant. We were didn't... all clamoring for that show. <laughs> yeah. Did, <laughs> didn't he invent the radio? Oh, no, that was Marconi. Give me the Marconi show. No, Marco Polo was a guy, you know. Yeah. Traveling I mean, who the... gives a shit? I didn't watch the show, so I don't know anything about it. <laughs> sure. Maybe if I had watched the show, I would know. But there was the South Park joke where they said that, you know, Netflix answered the phone with, you're greenlit. Yeah, because they would greenlight everything. Absolutely. There was also Space Force, Goop Lab, Bling Empire. Oh, Hi- Space Force. Yeah, two seasons. Which just felt like a, a, okay, cool, you guys really quickly turned around a show that's making a jab at Trump's administration for creating the farcical Space Force. Like, all yeah. right, good job. We'll be laughing when they save us from... An asteroid? Or aliens. Yeah. And they fuck you. This is what they would also do. They would take beloved shows that a lot of people felt were canceled too soon Mm -hmm. and then be like, we're going to give them four more seasons and they're going to suck. Yeah. Can you give me any examples? (laughs) Arrested Development. Oh, yeah. Three perfect seasons. They're like, why don't we just bring it back for three more seasons? People love this thing that ended 15 years ago. And they're like, it's going to feel weird. The actors are going to be weirdly older. Yeah. It's going to be shot differently. <laughs> and we're all going, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And Netflix is all and there's about gonna be one character that doesn't come back. They're mm-hmm. just going, where's that guy? Yeah. They, they, they really lean into the nostalgia. And instead of just leaving things be in nostalgia world, they, they revive them. Haven't you seen Pet Cemetery? It's not a good idea to revive dead things. I've actually never seen Pet Cemetery. That's the lesson. You don't revive dead things. That's or, the whole or thing. Or Frankenstein. Is that Mary, the lesson of Frankenstein? Yeah, that you shouldn't revive dead things. You shouldn't revive a monster. It's dead for a reason. That monster is cool, though. The monster is cool. The monster it's, is cool. Yeah. Hmm. And, and then, of course, you had Blockbuster. That was a show on Netflix. Kind of an insult to Blockbuster. What was it? It was a show about a Blockbuster store. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. It ran for one season. Yeah. It's just it's it's crap. It it is a it they churned out crap. So and then they had every shitty cartoon you didn't want to watch. Oh yeah. Oh, Mr. Bubbles' fantastical <laughs> bubble house. But this but the problem was that they needed to do this. They needed to once all the licensing stuff started to go go away, and all these other companies were getting in, going like, actually, we're going to take our content right. back and start our own thing. They needed to build out a library of stuff. They needed to show, hey, we've got a ton of content, but it was all it was. The truly the epitome of 
quantity over quality. They were emphasizing having a bunch of shit <clears throat> instead of quali- quality stuff. My favorite genre of Netflix content, mm. um, actor you love phoning it in. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, they gave Ryan Reynolds like three of the same movie. Red Notice. I don't know. Fucking. I see. Blue, I can't, blue Notice. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Trap or something where. <laughs> the Legend of Mr. Trap. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, Netflix movies. Okay. Six Underground, Red Notice, The Adam Project. Oh, I watched The Adam Project. Yeah, I did too. That kid was a great actor. Um, not a good movie. No, not a good movie. Six Underground, couldn't tell you what it's about. It's just, oh, Ryan Reynolds is charming and like shoots a gun. White women everywhere are going to go crazy for this. They love him. He's so funny and he's he breaks down the fourth wall frequently. Or another... another a Michael Bay movie too. Red Notice? Six yeah, Underground? Six Underground, um, yeah. And I feel like I could tell that Michael Bay was like, fuck Netflix the whole time. <laughs> you, can, you can tell with these Netflix movies that... It, 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 they've got potential, but because they don't care about quality, it's just a money grab for the the creators of the movie. Oh yeah, case in point, Glass oh, yeah. Onion. Then the the uh, Knives Out. They paid Ryan John. Was it Ryan Johnson? Yeah. They paid him like four hundred million dollars <laughs> for two movies. That's my other favorite. That, um, it just it's like that's the the business part is like how do you guys how are you running a publicly traded company and you are this fucking bad at at overpaying. It seems like there was no negotiation. It would be like me going to uh, the store for the first time and going, oh, wow, you guys got fucking frozen waffles. Will you take $500 for one pack of those frozen waffles? And the store's just like, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're paying us $500, are you sure you don't want to, like, I don't know, shop around? Or no, just, <laughs> I want these waffles, okay? <laughs> take the $500. That's my other favorite Netflix genre. What? Um, beloved director, and we're not giving him any notes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, <laughs> we're, we're giving Spike Lee a movie, and it's going to be four hours. Wait, they did that too? Uh, the Five Bloods. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't watch it. Don't. Oh, mostly because I'm racist. but <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just a brutal movie. Really? I mean, there was something in there, but it just was so long. By the end, I was just going, "Why? What, what are we doing?" Mm. I I I really want need to watch uh, "Do the Right Thing" again because I that movie's so good. I just love the way it's shot and the fisheye lens, and, and you just feel like, "Oh my god!" After having lived in New York during the summer when it oh, is um, miserable, "Do the hot. Right Thing" um, reminded you of your time in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. No, it didn't. No, it did not. Just the fact I it, it was over my ben head. Just in Williamsburg. Shut up, shut up. It was over my head. The fact that the weather was so uncomfortably hot that it made tensions People crazy. Yes, and I I just I was like, yeah, I guess I get that. But having lived there and having w- w- like there are one or two days where you're just yeah you're fucking pissed off because it's so uncomfortably hot. It makes people horny. It makes people horny. It makes people more racial. You're out at the bar. People are asking, "Do you have AC?" Yeah. Oh, man, can go. you imagine not having AC? I'll go home with you. A lot yeah. of people. Yeah. Oof. Babu. Anyway, so here's some of the quick points. The overall deal is worth $233 million a year, which is the estimate. And the AMPTP, their original um, proposal would have amounted to being worth about $88 million a year, whereas the WGA's initial proposal was like $460 million a year. So kind of a middle ground. Streamers can use AI based on writer scripts. But there's been like a lot of limitations yes, on it. Yes, but so writers will still get credit and compensation when AI is used. And it's kind of like the writers have to kind of be piloting it. They can use it to kind of create basic outlines, but then go in and finesse it themselves. Um, streaming before didn't offer the same. This is the crux of the thing. It didn't offer the same rewards for success as traditional TV. So now they're getting closer to that. Uh, They still, crucially, they will not release viewing data. But I think 
they still got to win on that because they right. will be, re- they're not releasing it to the public, but they will be releasing it to the guild. Right. With the, and they can confidentially share it with their members. And then, which and, I think is a huge. Oh yeah. Cause that's yeah. how these reward uh, structures right. are, are going to be. Right. And I, th- so I think that's going to have the same <clears throat> practical effect that they wanted. Yeah. But a, I think that a big reason why, um, and I'm not the only one to uh, posit this. Other is, people are positing it? Oh, dude. So many other people have posited the following. Okay. The, the data is all, it's all bunk. It's like the, the viewing hours are probably way, way smaller oh, than you would think. Definitely. Which, just to tease this, we might talk about this at a later point in a later episode, but there is a, a theory that seems to be gaining ground online that the internet is mostly just bots interacting with one another. And that's a big deal because ad revenue is like the backbone of the internet economy. And if it turns out that most of the clicks and views and stuff are just bots, then it's all just a house of cards. Netflix, anybody? Oh, yeah. That was really good. <laughs> God. I didn't finish that series. I never fucking watched it. Well, because I'm an ally, and once uh, Kevin Spacey got got the axe, I was like, well, I'm not going to watch uh, House of Cards anymore. I'm not going to support this. No, I'm kidding. I stopped watching way, way, way before that because I just, I was like, all right, because that's getting- another thing that they do. Oh, this show is incredibly popular. Let's make it go for 25 seasons. Netflix does that? Yeah. Look at look at Stranger Things. They're on like season 40 or something. It's ridiculous. Truly on season five. Nah, I don't know about that. I think that they, I think that they're going a lot further than that. But so, uh, part of the thing is that shows that are watched by at least twenty percent of their domestic subscriber base in the first ninety days, and for every year thereafter, the first ninety days will get a bonus, which could be anywhere from nine thousand to forty thousand dollars, depending on the type and length of the program. Foreign streaming residuals, which they barely had anything for. So like if your show streams in Spain or something, uh, will increase. I want that dinero. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dinero. Si. Si, claro. Euros. Por supuesto. Por supuesto. So Netflix, for example, will total, um, on a Netflix show, you can get up to like $32,830 per episode over the course of three years versus roughly 18,000 and a half previously. Yeah, I want I just, I don't I don't want to go through all of this, but maybe we can post it somewhere. There's a there's someone someone put up a great um it's a document with where they started with what the original writers guild right. proposals were on May 1st, what the AMPTP offered back and then what they won after striking. And it's like, it's, it's just, it's great to see, you know, so, cause some things were, you know, some things were higher than, it, you know, they originally wanted <clears throat> certain percentages. Uh, and the studios were like, no, we're not going that high. They, you know, went much higher than their offer, but some things were, they were asking the, the, the studios didn't even counter. They were basically like, go fuck yourself. Yep. And now they. And We're then like, they got okay. Something. Let's fucking talk about. It this. seems like the so ones we where, should post that because it's yeah, it's great to see the the one. It seems like there was basically a middle ground when there was negotiation. The WGA started high, producers started low. They found a middle ground. It just kind of all worked out. But so one of the big ones was the um, you know preserving the writers' room thing a lot. You know, <clears throat> right? That was according to this the 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 studios flatly refused to even counter on that. They were like, we're not discussing it. And they were, wait, what do you mean? The, the writer's room thing, like having a minimum staff, uh, a minimum staff in a minimum period doing the, um, God, what we were talking about the, this was, this was when the writer's strike happened, the mini rooms, right. The mini room things, right. All of these things where they were like, we, you know, we want you guys to stop cutting out all of our, uh, all of our lifelines on these things and, and shaving, uh, doing all these like cost cutting well, so that leads us to how it's how this deal is going to affect all the streamers because the deal, according to the Wall Street Journal, it's going to mark the end of, quote, peak TV where money and jobs were just like plentiful, where they were answering the phone with your green lit, where they were spending, like Netflix spent $17 billion on content last year. That's probably not going to continue. So they're going to, 
Streamers are going to have to pay more for writers, more for directors, because directors just got their deal. Um, Apparently, they got a shitty deal, though. Oh, really? Well, they didn't go on strike. The uh. SAG and the WGA went on strike and were like, hey, we want to be... We want to be compensated fairly for our work. DGA was like, "No, I'm not joining. Mm. We're gonna, we're gonna just strike a deal with the studios." Well, nonetheless, they're going to pay more for writers, and then whatever comes with the actors is going to cost them more. Mm-hmm. So it's, and they're gonna have to do all of that without adding to existing production costs, which are which are already really high. So that means that there's gonna be, even though it's a win for everybody, there are going to be. Likely fewer productions, fewer jobs going around, but more money for those, you know, the cream rises to the top. So it's not going to be the case that, yeah, they're spreading everybody thin and paying three people to do these mini rooms for a couple weeks. They're, so my hope is that they're going to, yeah, they're going to be making fewer new shows. So I'm hoping that it'll shift from quantity over quality to vice versa, where it'll be yeah, I just, high I quality just, shows. I disagree with that framing though of because that's the, reading the article is it's it's frustrating they frame it in this way where it's like because of this because of this new deal these streaming companies are going to have to change everything it's like you know it's the, fewer new shows in production a higher bar to get shows renewed rich paydays going only to an elite few mm. it's like that is not the outcome of what happened that's the the outcome of this uh this new deal with with the WGA that is the outcome of them running a horrible business, mm-hmm. green lighting things that have no business getting green light, right. p- p- putting money behind things nobody wants or cares about. Right. And then they were building all of this off of, you know, cheap labor and being like, well, we'll just cut costs on the talent side, writers, actors, you know, make it harder than ever to have a career. And so yes, fewer things are going to get made, but like, to be honest, even with, however many shows were being made, it was, it's an incredibly difficult, difficult job to get. There's not a lot of writing jobs going right. around. So I think, uh, we have it somewhere here. They, th- there was a, there was a producer who said he sees about, he predicts there's going to be about a third. We're going to lose about a third of the shows. It's going to shrink by like a third, Yeah, another which is pr- not an insane no. number. When you're thinking about all the content that's getting produced, the the outcome will be that they're like the people who are getting hired to make stuff will have better jobs and better productions. Right. I think protections. I'm sorry. Another thing that, uh, that I saw a a prediction that someone was making was that there's going to be some consolidation among the studios because currently it is kind of confusing for, for we, the consumer, because there are so many options and not only, Options like you got Hulu, Max, Netflix, Disney, Peacock, Paramount, Apple TV. That's seven. Showtime. It's Showtime. You've got, I mean, Amazon Prime. A freebie. Freebie. Well, that's Amazon. And then <laughs> Tubi. Tubi. And then within those, you've got add-ons. You've got different tiers. You've got sports plans. So there's likely going to be some consolidation in the space. But it's just, it's just funny that that the secret the. The secret's out. It's not a viable business plan to just let people pay a flat rate per month. You need ads. Like that's how the whole, that's how they made money. I, I'm just, it really is surprising. Yeah. They also talk about the consumer. I think that's the real loser in all of this. They, so they said, I love to be a loser <laughs> consumer. <laughs> Isn't that what we all are? Uh, just dude, loser such cons- a loser. When, when it really comes down to it, we're all just loser consumers. The cost of streaming subscriptions has risen sharply over the past year as Hell entertainment yeah. companies focus on acquiring customers and growth at all costs gave way to a profitability push. That trend is likely to continue and the cost of the strike settlement will go will give streamers one more reason to lift prices. Disney in August raised the price of its flagship streaming service, Disney Plus, and Hulu by more than 20% each. Ooh, baby. Its second round of significant price hikes in about a year. We lose. Paramount, <laughs> Paramount CEO said he plans to again raise the price of Paramount Plus. Who's watching Paramount Plus? Others are likely to follow. You don't watch Yellowstone? I don't. 
You don't watch 1859 or whatever, 1893. Nobody knows the date. Consumers face an increasingly complicated array of subscription tiers and packages as some streamers experiment with add-on sports plans and just add adopted tiers. Households will also have to pay for services they once enjoyed free of charge as part of a family sharing arrangements as more services crack down on passwords. You know what's you know what's not um confusing at all for me, the loser consumer? This show the this show that's coming from the UK, Naked Attraction, that that has just um, dare I say, come onto the scene with a bang and a... Uh, Why do you dare to say come? Because they're naked, man. There's no coming. When you're, the it's show, naked and afraid, not naked and coming. Well, this isn't naked and afraid. This I mean, is, naked this attraction. This is arguably naked and fearless. <laughs> it's called Naked Attraction. It's it's a UK dating show. It, it's, premier, it's made its American premiere on uh, Max... I, I can't call it Max on HBO. Call it HBO. It's 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 called Naked Attraction. It's, it's, it's all on we HBO. have as loser consumers is is uh, refusing to say their name. Yes, thank you. That's all we've got. <laughs> but it's if you've got HBO, you got to watch it. This show is absolutely bananas. They take they take. Well, can we tell? Can we tell them how I found out about this show? Sure. Ben, we we did a live show in London, so some of you guys might know about this because you were there, but. The night before, he said, I want to show you something on the show, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. And in front of hundreds of people, you showed me this show. Yeah. And I lost my mind. Yeah. So I but, was like, I didn't know you could put this on TV. Yeah. They, they show a lot more on television in the UK than here in the United States. It blew my mind. They've got those stiff upper, upper lips. They truly, they truly keep calm and carry on over there. There's a picture uh, on, on my Instagram of us on stage yes. with a... We the, had it up, up on the big screen for quite a while. Just a just a big cock. Yep. So the premise of the show is that hey, uh, the the most fun part of dating is when you both get naked. Anyway, and it's also the most vulnerable. So let's just skip to that part. And you've got like six contestants who are all vying for the love and affection of one person who's in the middle. They are fully clothed, as is the host. And they first, you can't see the contestants, but they lift up um, the, the like uh, glass or whatever and stop it just above their genitals. So the first thing that you see is, is, their, penis. is their penises or their vaginas. Just that's it. That's all you see. And then they go into these close up 4K HD shots of their, of their genitals. You see the Jennies right there. Jenny's Jenny's man everybody's and and I believe the person makes a, the first round of judgment based on the genitals and just right away is like I don't like I don't like that guy's penis I don't know why this one's Australian but I don't like that guy's penis get him out of here and then the guy and then they show him and he's like hey, you don't like my penis then all right well it's been fun to be here and now I'm going to get out of here and then he leaves and then I believe they have them turn around, and then she judges by the they judge by the ass. They do the butt. They do judge by the ass. I guess ass. that makes sense. Oh, that guy's got a really brown looking ass crack. He do you see his face? Yeah, you see their okay, face afterward. The f- oh, so they narrow it down. So and you're going it, strictly off genitals at first. I believe that that's like the first round. Then it's ass, and then it's like midsection. When and do then you see face. face? You see face eventually. Last. And then it gets down to the final two. And then they just got their fully naked bodies. And they awkwardly bring them out in front of the contestant. And they're like, wow, so what do you think of Cameron here? What do you think of David? And they're both just standing there with their dicks out and just... But the most interesting thing to me is these aren't... These aren't people who are like down on their luck and just resorting to being on television naked. They're like... One guy I remember watching the show was like a real estate developer. Like a, they're, they're people with... I, I just don't understand. I don't understand. I just, I don't get it, but it's awesome. It and, clearly works. It's the number one show in America, or uh, it's the number one show streaming on Max right now. There you go. And then the the person who is choosing the dates then goes backstage, takes off all of their clothes, and comes out, and then they're both just looking at each other naked, and then they give a hug. Wait, does the person who gets chosen then get to, when they see them naked, go, oh. No, they don't oh, get, they, they are chosen, and then... They go on a clothed date and the camera follows them for that. And then they do a little post date kind of interview. And it's uh, very sweet. My biggest concern is that the people are going to start, 
studios and execs are going to start realizing this is what people want. This is the number one thing on streaming. Oh, can we please get some naked Marvel shows? No, but <laughs> scripted stuff is so expensive, right? And right. they're like, okay, we got part pay, of that is we, wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> we got to pay writers. We got to pay directors. We got to pay like the actors. Why don't we just get some real estate developer, dickhead? To show his dickhead? T- take Wait, his- are you saying that you're afraid that they're going to skew heavily toward reality because they've yeah. already got so much reality TV? But people fucking eat it up. Yeah, and they have been since the real world and road rules were introduced on MTV Music Television. Right. So my uh, my concern is that mm-hmm. as a loser with, consumer, as a loser consumer, mm-hmm. consumer with a um, w- with streaming services being more conservative and less, more afraid to take risks, mm. they're gonna be like, "Fuck it, just green light, naked and." Chilling? Sucking each other off. Naked and chilling. Yeah. They got another show over there where people just, I forgot what it's called, but people just. Love Island? No. Because everyone. It's, it's way better than that. It's. um. Everyone goes nuts over this stuff. It's you just. Butt people? What? Butt people? Butt people? <laughs> Go on. It's, he, he got you. It's. it's the pe- record will. Refl- <laughs> it'll show. He got you. <laughs> <laughs> it's. It's basically gaming streaming. It's people reacting to either television shows or news stories or something. And they're just like a couple best friends, siblings, husband and wife. And they're just, they're normal Britons, Britons, British people. Sure. I got it. And they give them tea and crumpets (laughs) and stuff, you know, keep them, keep them satiated. And then they're just reacting. So like one was they were watching the, uh, the King coronation and it's just their normal reactions, and there were guys being like, "Ah, oh, he looks like he looks like garbage. He looks what? What's all this pomp and circumstance for?" Blah, 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 blah. It's so fun to watch. It's called like Fishbowl or something like that. It's really great, but they're not naked. Nobody's naked. Any whomst. You know who really doesn't like this show? They've already posted videos about it. Naked, naked attraction. Oh, I do know who. Yeah, Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh. These guys have a take on everything. They have a take on absolutely everything. I mean, it's abs- like no matter what it is, yeah, they'll have a take. Their 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 main take And it'll be the corniest shit. Well, their main take that I part- about how it doesn't really line up with their white Christian values. Right. They <laughs> Matt Walsh is of course like, "Well, there's no surprise that a society in decline without any kind of meaningful, cohesive culture would eventually decay to this point. And it's like, shut That's up. That's actually really absolute. good. Thanks. Um, <laughs> but the, the, their other point that I'm like, yeah, I get it, is like we're degrading these people. Nobody's forcing them to be on these shows. You know, you would think that being, it's just, it's more contradictory shit where they're like, oh, the left is so prudish and and they can't the left is yeah they they can't take any kind of humor or anything like that and oh but then they see a dick and they're like nobody it's society's it's, collapsing it's an adults it's a show for adults like ghetto fucking who cares man don't watch it yeah don't watch it matt matt shapiro matt beep what the fuck is his name matt walsh do you think he watches it <clears throat> and the the, the vaginas come up and he's like what is a woman <laughs> What what is a woman? I don't know what I'm looking at here. <laughs> These guys need to relax. All right, let's shift gears. What do we got here? Yeah, c- pop the clutch, guys. He can't for the audio <laughs> listener. He just forced it from second into first. I don't know what you just did. We were going downhill. Okay, but still, you would not you shift it into third if you're going down a hill, not into first. No, nah, not the way I do it. Okay. So y'all y'all remember Ozempi? It's all I think about sometimes. Ozempi? Yeah. And we got you got to fly in this apartment. I know. I'm it's just ignoring it. I'm just ignoring it. It's not it. driving me nuts, but I, I do hear it. It's also not an apartment. It's actually a set. You know who wants us to be on... on you know on, how all the guys are thinking about the Roman Empire? Yeah. I'm thinking about Ozempic. Yeah. Well, I thought you were going to say that airline CEOs are thinking about Ozempic. Me too. They He's, should hire me at an airline CEO. Is it, you want to They should it? hire me... As an airline CEO. They should hire me as the guy who flies the damn things. They should hire me to have diarrhea on the plane. <laughs> I got diarrhea on a plane. Yeah. That Let me tell you. Definitely check out. Not fun. Down the whole aisle? 
No, I didn't do it. I made it to the bathroom. I was so lucky. I was in the very first exit row, like uh, right in front of the bulkhead where the bathroom is. So I got served my dinner first. It was on a transatlantic flight from New Jersey to Milan. And they served the dinner and I ate it real fast as I want to do because I eat very quickly. And within about 20 minutes, I was going, oh no, oh no, I gotta go. And I got up and I went to the bathroom and uh, it was you tough. Farted, you farted out your shit? I farted out my shit. I farted out my shit. <laughs> yes, I did. And of course, I'm sitting there just going like, Jesus Christ, everybody's going to hear how many times I have to flush. And um, I got out and nobody cared. But then there was a line of people waiting to use the bathroom like within another 10, 15 minutes. And I thought, oh, okay, the food is bad. Everybody's getting the same uh Rhea. Right. Yeah. God, New Jersey to Milan. Yeah. Was it just full of New Jersey guineas going, I can't wait to see the motherland? I do not remember. Probably, yeah. It was loaded with them. So I'm going to retract yeah, that. Yeah, 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 it was loaded with yeah. them, man. Yeah, they wouldn't shut up. Bunch of guys with crucifixes tattooed on them. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. <laughs> okay, so there was this uh, story going around. I mean, first of all, Everybody is apparently on Ozempic and WeGovy and the air, like it's, it's. Which I don't believe, I don't, whatever. I don't know. But the impacts of it are still unknown. Like there are entire industries, including and especially airlines that are going to be affected. Some positively, some positively, some negatively. There's one analyst uh, who is estimating that if every passenger lost 10 pounds, it could save United Airlines, for example, $80 million a yeah, year. Yeah, Sheila... Kaya go. Oof. I always get the names wrong. It's Sheila. Sheila Try again. Sound it out. Kaya glue. Kaya glue. Kaya glue. Kaya glue. A Jeffries financial analyst. Jeffries. She estimated in a recent p- report on the implications of a slimmer society that airlines could save a significant amount of money if the average passenger lost weight. Yeah, that's right. And airplanes, as you guys are probably well aware, the lighter they are, the less fuel they have to burn which is uh, where those savings come in. So they've already done a whole bunch of stuff. You'll probably notice there's no longer maggot for, I mean. There's no more maggots? Magazines. Oh, magazines. Magazines aren't on airplanes anymore. Lighter food carts. Lighter food carts. Less food. Like they do every single thing that they can to uh, make those damn things lighter. I don't know why they don't just make the whole plane out of the black box. That that could save some (laughs) I'm always saying that. Yeah. Make the whole damn thing out of it. Or put a giant parachute in it. That would weigh so much. Oh, my God. Can you but imagine? But they said using United Airlines as a model, she estimated that if each passenger weighed each, pass- each, passenger, if weighed. each passenger weighed 10 pounds less on average, the weight savings would equal around 1,790 pounds per flight. Referencing a past example of the airline cutting down aircraft weight, she estimates that the airline would save 27.6 million gallons of fuel per <laughs> year or around $80 million Why? worth going by the average price of fuel this year. Why don't they just give all the passengers diarrhea? It's one way to do it. But I was going to say... Oh, but then the dookie would stay on the airplane. No, it goes right out. Whoosh. Well, that's only if you're over the ocean. On a flight from New Jersey to Milan? Oh, they're dumping it. <laughs> they're dumping it. Well, you're you're not going over the ocean. You're going over like Greenland and stuff. Anyway, what are you talking about? Because the Earth is round, no, man. Don't, well, I'm not getting into this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not outing myself. <laughs> well, okay. So I've seen the dang maps. <laughs> here's here's a uh, here's here's a crazy thing that we didn't get to share last time because the the full effect of of the success of Ozempic has not hadn't fully been understood. But so. Ozempic is made by a company called Novo Nordisk, and they are a Danish company, so they hail from Denmark. Denmark, uh, and so at one point this year, at their peak, they were valued at four hundred and twenty-eight billion dollars. Right, that is more than the entire Danish economy at four hundred and six billion dollars. So this one company is was at one point; it's still pretty close, bigger than the entire right. Danish economy. And it, what, without their success, it is estimated that Denmark would actually be in a deep recession, which is wild. So Novo and Eli Lilly, who are the makers of WeGovy, um, are enjoying this veritable duopoly. No, on, I don't think Eli Lilly does WeGovy. I think that's... Which one do they do? Because uh, I think WeGovy is just the... 
the lower dose one for weight loss mm. rather than the it's right on the tip one. of my tongue it's a we know it's semaglutide semaglutide eli Lilly makes uh, 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 come on dude it's giving me the actual eli Lilly semaglutide it is Munjaro. Yes, that's what it wow, is. Wow, folks. That's how long it took me versus the guy over here. Mr. Can't Google shit. What, were you using Bing.com? <laughs> or were you using MSN over here? Jesus, I God. typed it into a, a text message. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I tweeted it. I tweeted so, Eli. <laughs> so, so Novo and Eli Lilly, are, they're the, the industry, just this weight loss industry that they both are absolutely dominating is estimated to be worth about a trillion dollars. Um, and they're not going to have any real competitors until about 2027 when competitor drugs, drugs are expected to, uh, come online. It's yeah, going to change man. everything. We're going to have, uh, gonna change everything. And cause it's not just making you lose weight. It's also suppressing appetites. I was going to say it makes you cooler. Do you think it makes you cooler? Oh yeah. Everything, every drug makes you cooler, man. <laughs> any drug. Yeah. <laughs> But there's another thing. There's not. Uh, they they didn't say a whole lot, but I do find it very interesting. The this headline. Uh, yeah. So Kellogg, and apparently news to me, Kellogg changed their fucking name to what? They're now Kellanova. Kellanova, man, that sounds that sounds too dastardly. That sounds too evil corporation. We're, Kellanova. We're Kellanova. Ugh. But so they're sounds like a shitty Hollywood couple. <laughs> Um, but combining their names. Sorry, go on. What, what, what would their names be? Kelly and... Go ahead. I don't know, Bossa Nova or something. Billy Bossa Nova. Kelly Nova is what they're calling the celebrity couple. Yep, we all know... Billy Bossa Nova? Yep. Yeah. And people with names like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Save me from this. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> but so it's... If Ozempic leads people to eat less, maker of Cheez-Its will be ready. Damn right. All right. So diabetes Good. drug, Ozempic, and other appetite suppressing medications are set to help overweight Americans cut down on their calorie intake. U.S. food companies are unlikely to sit idly by. Yeah, because so, they want you to keep eating them damn Cheez-Its. But if people are getting skinny and not wanting to eat, what's Cheez-It to this do? Is the, this is the CEO of, uh, of Kelanova. We're by no means complacent, but they don't really go into what they're going to be fucking doing. I, yeah, right? I can tell you exactly what they're going to be doing. They're going to be trying to... Trying he called to- it very, very early days, but but said the company was studying its potential impact on dietary behavior so it could respond if necessary. It's like, okay, you're talking about these addictive foods that we have and this drug that <clears throat> makes people less addicted to them. Are they like, okay, we need to be ready. We need more addictive chemicals we're going to put in these fucking foods. If I see one person not grabbing those Cheez-Its, making a healthier choice... This makes me want the hot and spicy Cheez-Its. They are so fucking good. We're going to have to get you some on some Ozempic. Tab- Tabasco hot and spicy Cheez-Its. If you, hadn't tr- if you haven't tried them, folks, go get them before that Ozempic turns off your, uh, your hunger switch. Or... Man, you got two flies now. They fucked. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Or... Or... or, or. Wait for the really addictive Cheez-Its. Uh, Go nuts on that stuff. Uh, yeah. See what kind of stuff they're c- cooking up. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait, wait for the nasty shit. I, I want them to, to to just lean into the advertising and say, now more addictive. But yeah. That'd be cool. Like Cheez-It addictive style. <laughs> you thought you could. <laughs> <laughs> like the ones with, I don't know, nicotine or like we developed an all new thing. It would be cool if they just started putting nicotine in them. Man, brother, if they put nic- hey, if anything- they put nicotine inside hot and spicy Cheez Its, I'd 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 never leave the grocery aisle. Anything to get the kids to stop vaping. Anything to get them to stop vaping. I'd be like that guy that Mr. Beast locked in the grocery store. We won't get to that just yet. We, we can. We should. Well, let's talk about real fast Mark Zuckercorn because um, he pulled a fast one on all of us, and uh, he he did a they debuted the new. They debuted the new um, Quest Pro. The headset. headsets. It's fine. It, it, but the big thing, they, they also debuted these smart glasses. They're pairing their... Ray-Ban. They're partnering with Ray-Ban, correct? And they have a little light that turns on when so people will know if you're recording them. 
Um, so you'll know exactly who to punch in the bar. Right. The guy with Ray-Bans with the little red dot on it. Like, God, that's going to suck. Yeah, it's going to suck. Actually, I think people are going to like it because they're going to go up in the camera and go, what's up? I just want to say what's up to my mom. <laughs> that's what you think is going to happen yeah. at the oh, bar? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Look at all those videos of the man on the street shit. I know, but that's the thing. It people already love sucks. The, yeah. It's already annoying. No, they don't. Did you see that guy fucking shoot those guys? That was cool. Insane. Yes. He yeah. got off. I think purely off of the jury hating. The- people are so annoyed with this and like stop fucking filming and pranking in public yeah. that they're like, you know, I, I don't, I don't mind that he shot him. Yeah. Well, it's in Texas, right? It was in Texas. I don't know where it was. Uh, well, so anyway, uh, Zuckercorn and, and Facebook or Meta, excuse me, they really pulled back on the idea because uh, before they were pushing this idea of the metaverse, right? And that we're all going to be living inside of it and doing everything inside of it with these shitty cartoon avatars. And then Mark Zuckerberg was like, no one cares about this. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to. We're pivoting. We're pivoting. I'm going to become muscular. I'm going to start wrestling. <laughs> and then now they're doing this. So he inter- he did this interview with Lex Friedman um, and they showcased this new thing called Pixel Codec Avatars, which is actually a pretty long running, it's their longest running research project they've had going at Facebook since like 2019. But it was the perfect thing to to uh, showcase exactly what it is. So I, I Can we watch look. like the first two minutes of it? Yeah, of course. It's so crazy. It is really right. crazy. Inside the metaverse. Mark and... Here's uh, the least this, charismatic. Yeah. I am Lex Freeman. Guy you've ever. I'm seen. inside the metaverse right now. We've got Mark Zuckerberg. He kind of makes a joke about it. He is on the other side of the world, and we are talking to each other in the metaverse. And I are hundreds of miles apart from each other in physical space, but it feels like we're in the same room because we appear to each other as photorealistic codec avatars. In 3D, there's no way it feels audience. like they're in the same room. This technology is incredible, and I think it's the future of how human beings connect to each other in a deeply meaningful way on the internet. No way. These avatars can uh, capture many of the nuances of facial expressions that we use, we humans use to communicate. So, for the audio listener, we humans, it, we just humans, an alien. just like me, uh, he's in this white space. And, and it, it is his full body with his clothes and everything. It is a, obviously they did, as Dylan was saying before we recorded, they did like a full body scan of him. This isn't technology that is Right, ready. you don't just put on the headset and no. appear like that. No, of course not. Yeah. But Emotion to each let's fast forward. For the podcast. So here he is. <laughs> he's, he's this is the, what I can't take though. They cut back to this shit and they're like, it feels like I'm in the room with you. It's well, like, no, it doesn't. Hang it on, so like- this is... So now we've got Mark watching him. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg is ruining the world. So <laughs> anyway, go on. Let's see. Lighting change? Yeah, I'm sitting right in front of you. I can't do an impression of him. It's also funny. They like... They, look at this. The they, lighting. Look at how the... And it doesn't feel awkward to be really close to you. There, He's just kind of experimenting at first. He's got a little light source and he's changing the location Wait, of it. Wait, I love Mark's answer to this. No, it does. I actually moved you. I moved you back a few feet before you got. Because you because <laughs> Lex was like right up in his face. Right? He goes, and it doesn't feel uncomfortable to be right up close to you. Yeah. No, it does. I moved you back. I didn't well, know that really close to you. No, it does. I actually moved you. I moved you back a few feet before you got into well, the headset. You were like right here. I don't know if people can see Look this. At that. This is incredible. The realism here is just incredible. Where am I? Where are you, Mark? Where 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 are we? I love this. <laughs> he and Mark misses yeah. the cue completely. Yeah. He, oh. he he doesn't know how to have conversations. Right. Like Let's see. You're in Austin, right? No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> this place where we're, we're shrouded by darkness. Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> does look like a worm accidentally like crawled on a genie bottle, and the genie was like, "Can you make a wish?" And the worm said, "Make me human." He just looks like a. Uh, a worm that turned human with ultra realistic face and just that's the gist of it uh folks for the audio listener god i wish you could see it you can see it you can 
What? Hot or not? This yeah. all started with hot Rating or not. Hotness? Yeah, this, that makes sense. This, this is hell. all started from one guy being so <laughs> horny, heartbroken. It's a dangerous combination. It's like um it's like uh it's like mixing the two pieces of epoxy or whatever. For for a nerd to be horny and heartbroken, that's how you create that's how you create. Oh, oh, horny and heartbroken. Yeah, horny. I and have to say, he does seem like he is. He's rebranded to being our kind of uh, mellowest billionaire recently. Yeah, he's it, he's. A, if there is a PR company behind this whole thing, they're doing a bang up job. I mean, just jujitsu. Well, sure, but like in a j- just married to one woman, having kids with yeah, her instead of two. Instead of like, what is Elon Musk like? How many women has he been married and divorced to? Nobody like knows anymore. Having chil- he's yeah, got like, like 12 children from... I almost... I think I got one of the flies. You would see it in your hands. No, but I think it... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. Anyway, go on. Yeah, Elon Musk fucked a lot of ladies. <laughs> <laughs> he truly did. Yeah, Grimes. But <clears throat> he doesn't seem to be inserting himself into crazy... Uh, Culture war bullshit, political shit. Elon right. Elon Musk was down by the border this weekend, just like right. live streaming migrants. Yeah. And Mark's like, isn't the metaverse so kooky? Yeah, he's like actually working on shit. Yeah, I agree. Speaking of Elon Musk, um, they trotted out Linda Yaccarino in front of uh, an audience to talk about... Our Italian queen. To talk about, yeah, um, all the X stuff. And right before they brought her out, they had Yael, Yoel, Yoel Roth, mm-hmm. who was the former, he was fired by Elon Musk. He was the, um, I believe he was head of safety. Was that what he was? He was head of safety, I believe. Yoel Roth. Do, 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 do. He was, yeah, he was the head of Twitter's trust and safety department. And they, uh, he was very publicly ousted by Elon Musk. And uh, they had him come out very short notice and had some bad things to say about Elon Musk and about X. And then Linda Yaccarino came out and basically just had to save face and um, do a bunch of damage control. And it's really, it was really kind of weird and awkward to watch because she's just such a CEO. Yeah. And some like really cringy parts where she's clearly. She gets asked, like, straight up, you know, are you the CEO or is Elon still running the show? And she's like, oh, it's me, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and then they start asking her about, uh, you know, very real things. Like, well, it didn't seem like you knew about X, Y, Z. And she's just like, no, I did. I made that decision. It's like, okay. Uh, but she also has, I just texted it to you. There's a great video of her. It's very embarrassing. She... She asked them to like make some noise if uh, if they well you we could just were watch brought it. in as CEO that is your title but you don't cover product as a result of the fact that the product team does not report to you the yeah. product team at Meta reports to Mark Zuckerberg mm-hmm. because the product team does not report to you there has been speculation that you are in more of a COO role or a CBO role a CEO in name only role. You know what's funny is that. We talk about that a lot at X. Uh, As you know, it's a very flat organization. I'm not sure what your definition of or how you want to kind of wiggle me into an answer of are you really just a COO or uh, I don't know. CEO, Uh, CEO in name only. Oh, CEO. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, not nice. I want to go back to your uh, he runs. Wait, 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 just the fact... The fact that she thinks that that's not nice to suggest, it's a fair question. Yeah. It's like, I are you actually the chief executive? Are you, are you running things day to day? Because Elon has been such and continues to be so prominent right. on the app itself as if he's running things still. It is a fair question. It's a fair ask. question. Yes. But I wouldn't call it nice. But that's fine. She's not there to ask nice questions. Bro, but she has a very funny moment when okay. she... Product... Uh, He runs technology. He leads a team of exceptionally talented engineers. And who's kidding who? Who wouldn't want Elon Musk sitting by their side running product? (laughs) (laughs) 
I see a show of hands. There may be a few show of hands to get the cute chuckles you're getting, but I would say the percentages in this room are about 99% who would say no to that and 1% of maybe personal opinion. What? Yeah, what? Mm -hmm. you asked a personal opinion question. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah. But I love that. Who wouldn't want yeah. Elon Musk by their side? You know, so he, in response to this, uh, this debacle, Elon tweeted, I have rarely seen evil in as pure a form as Yoel Roth and Kara Swisher's heart is filled with seething hate. Wait, what? In his, that doesn't, I regard their dislike of me as a compliment. He's, he's calling them evil. It wasn't brother, a nice question. My brother in Christ, let me explain something to you. This is going out directly to Elon Musk. The reason why people question you so much and why people continue to doubt you is because you have a very, very well-documented history of using vaporware, of bullshitting, of making empty promises that don't pan out. You name it, you tend to promise the world, over-promise and under-deliver. So that's why people, you, you, you lose your, um, it's like fool me once, shame on you. Fool me fucking 20 times, suck me off. I mean, also, not only that, it's the, it's the fact that the stuff UL Roth is saying is like, Elon Musk is like very careless and irresponsible about the things he does. So sure. he, he's, when he was talking to her, he said, in his interview with Swisher, Roth recounted how Musk put him personally in danger. Musk suggested on Twitter that Roth had advocated for sexualizing children, a completely unfounded claim, right. which led to death threats and his address being posted online. So he says, I had to sell my house. I had to move. He encouraged Jacarino to think about how Musk could turn on her and said the site was bleeding users and advertisers. Mm. So it's like, you calling this person <laughs> clearly evil? I mean, you see it every day with the way he uses his platform. It's like he's oh yeah, he's giving attention to all these horrible people. It's, uh, <laughs> psycho it's shit. awful. And he like, you know, basically turned a mob on this guy. Yeah. Speaking of psycho shit, uh, we we love Mr. Beast here here at uh, here at our, here on our show. We do love Mr. Beast. Um, he tweeted the other day. We I'm, believe in beef. We believe in beef, Mr. Beef. He tweeted, "I messed up. I bought a random grocery store and told a random person I'd give him ten thousand dollars every day he lives in it, and it's been weeks, and he shows no signs of ever leaving. I'm gonna go broke." When you so you told me you want to talk about, it, I said. I thought you fell for a I cuz I saw it and I was like oh that's a screenshot that's not real. No, it's a real tweet. I know. Yeah. And then you were like I'm looking at it on his profile. Yeah. Someone says someone did the math and said you owe him uh $175,000 right now and Mr. Beast follows up and says it's actually been over a month so far. It's and probably then, about what 300 grand? Something like that. And then this other guy asked if if the guy is alone or is the store still operating as a store? Mm -hmm. And Mr. B said he blacked out the windows and locked it. So this guy's just... And he says, ha ha. Yeah, ha ha. <laughs> I, I love this. I can't wait for this video. I can't wait for the thumbnail where the guy's just... You know, if he really wants to make it enticing and challenging, turn off bathroom access. Like, that's what he's got to do. How is that Stop enticing? with the running water. Because then the guy's got to shit in a bucket or something. He's got to figure it out. Uh, but the food starts to rot. Throw a coyote in there. <laughs> Oh, Make so it you, you want Mr. Beast to be more depraved and fucked up. Just you, lean into it, man. You've already come this far. Yeah, the yeah, become, the be yeah become Lean the into the beast part. <laughs> Stop being such a mister. Yeah, be more of a beast. <laughs> be more of a beast. Be more of a beast. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see, finally, let's, we gotta, we gotta. <laughs> oh, we gotta sign off with this one? Robert F. Kennedy Jr., another huge, um part of the show uh how come i can't get this to play okay so he tweeted <laughs> he tweeted do you think he knows he's not good at it or do you doing think a backflip he's good at it i think that he he, he uh, yeah it's like a dad doing a backflip just like hey everybody watch this and he just does like a kind of shitty backflip okay into the pool but um should I, i'll do it in his voice so uh robert f kennedy jr <laughs> tweeted <clears throat> thank you so much to on, let me try it again. Yeah, you kind of lost it. Thank you so much to all who donated 
for taking our support base to the next level. Hashtag Kenny24. And so he's thanking everybody for uh, for their donating. And in celebration, he does a backflip. Okay, you guys ready? Pretty great. Wow. <laughs> I wouldn't quite call it a backflip. No. He does some kind of diagonal. Yeah, it's... It, it, uh, it's... 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 <laughs> Dare I say, it's incredibly cute. <laughs> that is the cutest thing I've ever seen. If he wasn't such a psycho, it's like, oh, brother, you've got my vote. Thank do you think you all. he promised that? Do you think I think that... he made this himself. <laughs> no, but do, you, but do you think he said, if you guys hit X oh, amount do in donations, I'll fucking backflip. Like it's a Patreon goal? And the, the junior heads were like, say no more, fam. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't know. I think so. Oh, wow. He tweeted a picture of him looking absolutely jacked as a young man on a rhino with a cigarette in his mouth. What? Oh, well, it's. do you see the tweet it's in response to? Yeah. It says, somebody needs to create you on a horse with some kind of gun using AI and it would go viral in minutes. I'm getting old socialist vibes. What the fuck? He does look really jacked. Yeah. Yeah. It's look at that sick. titty muscle. Yeah. Yeah. It is pretty sick. No, that looks like him. Yeah, wow, he is riding, riding the rhino. Well, that's a good place to stop. You got anything you want to say? Thank you. For what? To who? They know. They know? Okay, so, uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for me, too. To huge, who? Huge shout out to RFK Jr. To who? To RFK Jr. Thank you? Thank you. That's not who for mine that. was, too. Sweet backflip. That was so cool, man. Did you was, donate? Oh, yeah. $500. You did? Oh, yeah. Big time. I wanted to see him do the backflip. He promised that if we donated, he would do a backflip. You know what the goal was? To get him the, to do The a, monetary goal to get him to do a backflip? $500. $500. Nobody was donating. Everyone say thank you to Ben. You're welcome. Watch the bonus. Watch the Watch bonus. The bonus. We're going to go into the bonus now. Patreon.com slash paypigspod. Patreon.com. Ah.